OK, let's play a game. Well, actually, this is a thought experiment wrapped into a game. This is an ancient Buddhist thought experiment, and there are two parts of this experiment. There's a baby goose, a gosling, and there's a glass bottle. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to slowly put that goose into the bottle. We're going to put it in backwards so it's the head of the goose is sticking out through the neck of the bottle. And bit by bit, over the next few weeks, we're going to feed this goose. And this goose gets bigger and bigger and bigger inside this bottle. Now, don't worry, this is just a thought experiment. No geese are actually harmed during the making of this. But over time, the goose has grown so big inside the bottle that there's no way of getting that goose out of the bottle. It's firmly stuck inside. Now, this thought experiment has one outcome. You need to save that poor little goose. You need to get that goose out of that bottle. But there are two constraints. The first constraint being you can't break the bottle. And the second constraint, of course, is you can't harm or kill the goose. How do you rescue the goose from the bottle? Now, when I have this conversation with my CEO clients, I hear a couple of ideas that come through, right? The first one is, well, maybe you could get some soap or some other lubricant and slowly squeeze that goose out. Unfortunately, you can't. The rib cage of the goose has grown so much, there's no pulling it out through the neck of the bottle. I hear other things like maybe you could melt the bottle. Well, that's going to harm the goose and it's probably going to destroy the bottle. So I'm afraid that one won't work either. So what are we going to do? This poor goose, how are we going to save it? Right. Now remember the two constraints I said, you can't harm the goose and you can't break the bottle. How do you rescue that poor goose? Well, here's what you do. You smash and break the bottle. You rescue that poor goose. You get that poor goose out of that bottle by breaking it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hold on, Joe, you said there were two rules, one of which was don't break the bottle. And the solution to this thought experiment is literally breaking the bottle. Well, of course it is, right? Why are you listening to me about what constraints or rules there are to save the goose? Why are you listening to me about that, right? The whole point of this thought experiment is to look beyond the rules that are set upon you, not only by others, but by yourself. And in smashing and breaking the bottle, you rescue the goose and you solve the experiment, literally by breaking the rules. And sometimes that's what we have to do. Now, it can be more challenging. Obviously, I'm not suggesting you break actual real legal rules, but you start to look at things differently by breaking the bottle, by going outside of well, what's possible outside of the constraints of what we're doing. And more importantly, in moving into the mindset of challenging rules and assumptions that exist around you, you challenge the rules and assumptions that are your, your own, that you've created in your own world. So literally, you are that goose in that bottle. You have to smash that bottle to break the rules, come through and do something differently. That story came via a wonderful guy I know called Robert Ellis, who wrote a book called Coaching from Essence. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, right? Did you feel cheated because I didn't really outline the rules properly for you there or I broke my own rules? Did you think that you should smash the bottle? Did you go there first? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And to keep playing this experiment over in your head, right? Think about this when you're out walking or swimming or in the gym or you've got some free space. Think about this little experiment and think about what other bottles are there in your life that you need to break. So go on, break that damn bottle. All right. This is the first part of a number of posts that I'm going to be using and making from my upcoming book called The Modern CEO, right? Thoughts and ways of working as a CEO in the 2020s, because basically, let's let's be honest, most leadership writing is firmly in the 1990s at best. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and to hit that subscribe bell up there in LinkedIn and or on YouTube and follow more on me and The Modern CEO thinking that I'm going to be releasing over the next few months. Thanks for your time. Bye bye now.